welcome back everybody. So I'm going to start off by pinning my hair out of the way. As we are applying pieces to the face, I've cleansed my skin using Bioderma to remove any oils. And these are the horns I'm going to be using. I made these this morning out of polymorph. And then I coloured them using alcohol activated paints. So I placed them on my forehead to work out the distance and roughly where I wanted them. And then I took a Krylon face liner pencil to draw around the base of the horn so I know exactly where it needs to go. Then it's a good idea to put them both back on your forehead so you can again make sure that they're symmetrical and then draw around your second horn. Don't worry about the lines because you won't see them once we start working on top of it. I'm using Sculpt Gel to build up the skin around the horns. It's a three component silicone moulding material. I'm going to be just using parts A and B. I'm going to thoroughly blend the two together on my palette using my palette knife. The tools can be found on Krylon's website. I'm placing the base of my palette knife at an angle and I'm spreading the silicone around the shape on my forehead. If you place your spatula at a 45 degree angle while smoothing the product round, it's going to save you a lot of blending work once we start to work into it. So just apply it in small sections building up that circular shape and then before you start working into it properly, just move on to the second one and get that in place before the silicone starts to harden. You will find it will start to droop due to gravity, but just turn your spatula knife on a 45 degree angle again and just smooth around it. I'm going in with a second layer just around the outer side. This is creating texture to the very top of it because we're getting a couple of layers there which is going to look like folds of skin. Once the silicone starts to set and cure, you can use your spatula to pull it out so that we're getting a little bit of room on the inside which is where we're going to put our horns. We can also use the spatula to manipulate the surface of the fake skin and create texture again which is going to look like the skin has split from the horns protruding out of the forehead. If you find you want to create some more added skin flaps or texture you can just make a little bit more of the sculpt gel up and add that to the surface. Next I'm taking some spirit gum and I'm applying that to the base of my horn. There are other adhesives out on the market but just make sure whatever one you use you have the correct remover for it. I left it to go tacky and then I'm just lifting back the folds that we've created of the fake skin and then pressing the horn in place. Then I'm going to hold that securely until it adheres to my forehead. Once I had both horns in place I then took a translucent powder and a little brush and just dusted that over to remove the shine. You could also use something like Super Matte Anti Shine by Makeup Professional. Moving on to the skin I'm using the CC Cream by Cover FX and the brush I'm using is my MAC 130 brush. I'm going to apply that to the entire face and also take it down the neck. I'm also going to apply it to my forehead and then I'm going to use a smaller brush to work that around the prosthetics. For the majority of my colouring I'm going to be using Supra Colour which is a cream based makeup. So using a foundation over the prosthetics first is a really good base for this. If I was mostly going to be using the alcohol based colours then I would just solely use alcohol for the entire lot the blood colour on the ripped areas I'm going to use the alcohol based paints and I'm just going to apply this using a fine liner brush to the very surface around the horns. To activate these paints I'm using IPA which I got on eBay and I have done a little bit more of a talk about this in previous videos. So now I've done the base colour of my blood I'm going to move on to creating the soreness around the horns. For this I'm using my Supra Colour palette. I'm using a deep plummy red shade which I'm working onto the back of my hand first so I'm taking the majority of the colour off and then pressing that onto my forehead. I am using a synthetic brush for this, this is actually a lip brush by Blank Canvas Cosmetics. As you'll know by now that synthetic bristles work better with cream based products. I'm using a patting motion to apply this and using my finger to blend it out again using a patting motion. The reason for this is the sculpt gel will leave a slight texture to the skin so if you try to blend over that with the brush you'll get a build up of product in the small ridges and you'll find it's a lot harder to blend out. So once we've got a nice amount of pigment in a circle around the horn, we're then going to concentrate a little bit more colour where the skin starts to raise up and that will be where the base of your fake skin starts. And the reason for this is because you would naturally have a slight shadow there where the skin starts to raise. Next I'm taking this black paint which is again alcohol activated and this one is by Crowland, it's their body illustrator palette and I'm applying this to just small areas on the surface of the split skin. And this is going to create some added depth, making it look deeper, more sore, and making it look like it's thicker around those areas. So I'm going to move on and come back to the horns at the end. I'm taking this Taupe Dip Brow by Anastasia Beverly Hills and my MAC 266 brush. I'm going to fill them in in their natural shape, just a bit darker than I normally would go for. And then I'm going to use a brow powder to darken the outer two thirds of the brow. 
So we've got a nice gradient at the front of the brow and then they get darker towards the outer corner. Nothing too outrageous. You can do what you feel suits your face or if you want to make them a little bit more devilish and maybe go black or really intense, that's completely up to you. I just decided to go a little bit darker than I normally would. For eyeshadow, I'm using Sugar Peel's Love Plus Red Eyeshadow. I'm going to start off by applying a little bit of NYX Jumbo Pencil in Milk across my eyelid. This is going to work as a base but it's always going to help the red to look more red. I prefer to use my fingers to blend it in as they're warm which helps to melt the product. I'm applying a couple of layers of this product over the mobile eyelid, so right from the lash line up to the crease of the eye. And the brush I'm using is my E24 Flat Shader Brush by Blank Canvas Cosmetics. Going into my Shade and Light palette by Kat Von D, I'm taking the shade Succubus. This is the warm contour colour which I'm applying to the outer corner of the eye in a V shape and then I'm working that in circular motions through the socket right to that inner corner. And I'm using my Real Techniques base shadow brush to do this. We're going to apply this a few times to really build up the intensity and this is going to work as our transition shade. So what it's going to do is allow us to apply a darker colour below it and it won't need as much blending. And the reason for this is because it would just fade nicely into that transition shade. I'm also fading a small amount of that into the very front of the brows. I'm working it into that inner corner and then flicking it upwards. In doing so we'll create a lot more drama to the eyes. Next I'm mixing together the matte black which is called Shax and Succubus together. Using my blank canvas E10 small socket brush I'm going to apply that to the very outer corner of the eye in a small triangular shape so it's like a V shape but it's really really small. I'm barely applying it to that mobile eyelid it's just on the outer V shape. And then going back in with my blending brush I'm working that through the socket and up towards the brow just blending out what's left. I'm going back in with a mix of the two eyeshadows on my E10 brush darkening the outer V again and then using my brush to blend that through. It is really important to apply the eyeshadows in layers, blend them out and then reapply them and then go over them again like I'm doing now with a clean blending brush. This is going to prevent you from just getting a muddy appearance to your eyes. I'm applying that same colour to the inner corner of the crease, so above the mobile eyelid but right on that inner corner and then using that base shadow brush just to blend that out up towards the eyebrow. Using my flat shader brush again, I'm going back in with that red eyeshadow from Sugar Pill and applying that directly underneath the lower lashes. And I'm taking my chisel shader brush by Crown and I'm using the colour Succubus to apply to the very inner corner of the eye underneath the lower lashes and also the outer corner of the eye underneath the lower lashes. Then I'm dipping that in both Shax and Succubus and applying that to the very outer corner, dragging it out and pulling it up to connect with the top lid. Taking an angled liner brush dipped in just the matte black, I'm applying that to the very inner corner underneath the lower lashes and the very inner corner of the top mobile eyelid. I'm using a light hand and a feathering motion to blend that into the red eyeshadow. For eyeliner, I'm using my Krylon HD Cream Liner in black. I'm applying that from the inner corner all the way to the outer corner, getting thicker as we get to the outer edge and I'm going to wing that out, creating a nice flick. I do have a more in-depth tutorial on winged eyeliner if you do struggle with it. I'm also going to take that eyeliner all the way across the waterline and I'm going to blend it in between those little lashes so we don't have any fleshy tones. And then turning the brush on its side I'm going to create a nice little point at the inner corner of the eye. And then lastly I'm tight lining underneath the top lash line. I've curled my eyelashes and I'm using the Better Than Sex Mascara by Too Faced Cosmetics. Then for lashes I'm applying two sets by Velour, the top lashes I'm using the Carly Lash and then the bottom lashes I'm using Keep It On The Low. And I'm also using this Lash Stick by Velour which has got a twisty bottom and it's an instant use one so you apply it straight away from the applicator to the eyelash and apply it straight to your eyes. So you don't have to wait around for it to go tacky and it's been designed to use with mink lashes. This is my MAC Pro Sculpt palette and I'm using the shade Shadowy. I'm going to place this down the sides of the nose and along my cheekbones to create some heavy contour. If you're going to use this look for Halloween and you're going to be in somewhere that's quite dark, you might want to switch this colour up and use a black or a really, really intense dark brown. As I said earlier, you want to build this up in layers. So apply a small amount, blend it out and then apply more. Don't be afraid to really go quite heavy with it, but in order to get that nice gradient, you need to do it in layers. I'm applying a small amount of that underneath my jawbone and then going back to my smaller brush I'm going to apply that at the temple area. This is going to give our face a more stern and structured appearance. This can also look quite nice paired with generic makeup when you do it more subtly. 
For blush, I'm using the same red eyeshadow we used on the eyes. Again, don't be afraid to apply a lot more than you would generically use. And then if you apply too much and you want to blend it out slightly, you can use your foundation brush to do so. I'm going to colour my lips in using the NARS Velvet Matte Lip Pencil in Mysterious Red. I really like the finish of these lipsticks. They're super comfortable to wear because although they're matte, they totally don't give you that drying effect. To create a nice ombre effect to mimic our eyelids, I'm going in with Night Moth Lip Pencil by MAC. I'm applying that to the outer corners of the top and bottom lid and feathering it towards the centre. By pressing my lips together, we're going to create a nice blend. But to ensure we get a nice gradient between the two colours, I'm going back in with the Mysterious Red by NARS. You could also use a black coal pencil to create this nice ombre effect. To add a nice glowy appearance to the face, I'm going to apply a little bit of Becca's Shimmer and Skin Perfector in Champagne Pop. I'm placing it on the tip of the nose, across the cupid's bow and the top of the cheekbones. Going back to the horns, I'm applying a small amount of wound filler. This is going to add some real depth to the look and make it look like congealed blood sat there and make it look more realistic and a little bit gooey. Over that I'm going to apply some TV Blood by Krylon and I'm using my little brush to do this. Adding this liquidy blood over the wound filler is going to make it look more fresh and a lot more realistic. You may want to do what I'm doing and paint a little bit of it up the horns and then switch between the brush and your finger to apply it to the forehead. Again use a pat in motion to do this to get the most realistic effect. And then that is your She Devil look complete. Thank you for watching, I hope you've enjoyed it. I made these horns myself, I made them this morning before the tutorial. They are relatively stuck well so you can be sure that you can go out wearing them and they're not going to fall off. If you've got any other suggestions for Halloween tutorials then leave them in the comment section below. If you've got any questions about this look also leave them in the comment section and I'll do my best to get back to you. I also want to quickly apologise that I've been a little bit lapsed with uploading recently. I've had a lot of work on, I've done a little something with Universal which is coming soon which I'm really excited about, it's going to be really good and I've also been working with Velour Lashes as I'm the face of their Halloween pop-up event this year so keep an eye out for the photos coming soon. So don't forget to give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. In the description bar I have listed all the products used and I've also listed my previous tutorials. I'm going to link two of my previous Halloween tutorials and if you click on those it will take you to the Halloween playlist. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!